Hi, this is Al. Uh, I'm here to show you uh, a video on how to make uh, battery cables so you can tie your solar uh, batteries or your, your battery bank batteries together uh, to accept solar or wind uh, power uh, and therefore you know, get it out, get that power out eventually to your inverter. <coughs> so making the cables uh, uh, yourself is, is pretty easy, fairly straightforward. Uh, once you determine the size of cable that you need, uh, the one consideration is to make sure that all the cables are the same size. I already got a bunch of cables here that are pre-made uh, and I'm going to show you uh, another one that I'll make here in just a second but uh, as you can see they're all uh, pretty much the same size so keeping the cable sizes the same is key <coughs> to having a good battery bank uh, to keeping the resistance the same across the batteries. <coughs> so make sure that you measure uh, across the longest point for your batteries. Usually when you're wiring in, in series, uh, you're going to have, uh, that's going to be in series parallel, you're going to have your series uh, connections are usually going to be the longest one because you got to go across batteries unless you turn the battery around or something. But anyways, if you keep all the batteries the same, uh, that series connection is usually going to be the longest one. So measure the longest run and then cut you a cable and cut it. Uh, longer than you need to so so there's a little bow on it you know kind of like this to make sure that you have flexibility to move that battery around move the cable around if you need to if it gets in the way of the cap or something like that and then once you have that distance mark it and cut all your cables the same way uh, so the process that I use is I cut the cables uh, here's one for example where it's a longer cable uh, I have already one in on it. Uh, the other end is not on. So once you measure what you need, <coughs> uh, you simply uh, cut the cable, strip the end off of it, and then put the terminal on it, crimp it, and then I solder it. So I have both a mechanical connection and a soldered connection, which gives me a much uh, better uh, mechanical bond uh, and also a much better electrical bond. So <clears throat> that's what I use. That's the way I do it. I don't have an actual uh, battery cable crimper, which is a specialized crimper that you hit with a hammer, put the cable with a, with a terminal end on it, hit it with a hammer, and it has like a center punch, and it punches it in the middle. So what I use is I use my vise, and I'll show you that in a minute. And the vise, uh, the front of the vise is not smooth. It's actually, you know, has, it's corrugated. <coughs> And that kind of imprints itself onto uh, that terminal, which gives it something to grab on. So it has uh, a mechanical bond, and that's just long enough or strong enough for me to be able to hold it in place really well. It's actually pretty tight. You can't just pull it. You cannot pull it off with your hands. But then I just go ahead and solder it, and then I uh, insulate the ends of it. So we're going to show you how to do that uh, in just a second. We're going to assume that uh, we're going to cut a little piece of this. Uh, and you're gonna, you could use, I personally use a four inch grinder with a cutting wheel. It's a lot easier to do it. Uh, if you don't have a, cu a cutting wheel on a grinder, you could use a Dremel tool with a cutting wheel or you could use a hacksaw uh, with a fine tooth blade and then just cut it. Uh, so, you know, cutting the cable is easy. Uh, big cable like this, like number four or number two, or, you know, once you get into the odd sizes, uh, you're not going to be able to cut unless you use one of those uh, three methods, methods I just mentioned. So uh, there's no dikes that are going to cut through that stuff easily. <coughs> uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started. And I'm going to reposition the camera just so you can see kind of what's going on here. But uh, <coughs> just to, um, let me see, let's go ahead and reposition so you can see the vise. I'm going to show you how you can cut the cable without actually wasting too much cable and I'm going to go ahead and kind of bring it there see if I can then capture the moment here so if you're going to cut cable doesn't matter what method you use the way that I do it is I clamp my cable in the vise and once I clamp that cable then I can I can grab it with the other hand and then use my cutting wheel here uh, whether it's a Dremel, Dremel tool or a 4 inch cutting wheel or whether it's a hacksaw and just grab it here and start hacksawing and then you get it out. So this gives you uh, 
a method to keep the cable tight uh, so you can cut it easier. And that's all there is to it. I'm going to cut this cable because uh, copper is pretty expensive and it gets pretty expensive to just uh, cut cable for no reason. So anyways, that, let, let's assume that that cable is cut. What you want to do at that point is measure it and then use that piece of, or you can use that piece of cable to then go ahead and start marking the rest of the cables you can cut. So cut your, all your cables first. So if I know, for example, that this is uh, my length here, right, and I want to go from one end to the other, uh, or I want to mark it, uh, I would, you know, assuming that the logs are not here, obviously, the terminal. If this is the length of the cable, then I just go, you know, mark it here with a, with a marker, and then do the same thing, mark it again, and you continue doing that until your cable is all, uh, all uh, marked, so you can come back and cut it. And then you have a whole bunch of cables that are pre-cut, pre-cut and ready to go. So you can now uh, put the terminals on and crimp them and do your thing, right? So that's that. Uh, the terminals that you can use and that I use a lot uh, because they're inexpensive. If you go to Harbor Freight, you can buy these uh, terminals. They sell them for number four uh, cable and they sell them for number two cable. <coughs> uh, these are uh, welding table logs. So you'll find them under the welding section where they have the welding rods and they work just fine here. Uh, the way that I set it up is, you know, grab your knife, cut this open, grab one, grab one terminal out, and what you want to do is you want to put your cable on here and see uh, how far back you have to cut the jacket. So. I'll have to cut the jacket right about there. So you want to cut the jacket long enough that you can fit the strands in there and have just maybe an eighth uh, to a quarter of an inch of uh, uh, copper showing. And then you're going to insulate that later. And usually, uh, you know, it's done pretty easily. So it's pretty easy to cut this out, take it out, take the jacket off. Now you can kind of clean it off a little bit, bunch it up a little. And hopefully, you know, that will fit here. Uh, I think I have the wrong kind here. I think I need to get number two. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, this is number two cable, sorry. This is not number four, so it's not going to fit on here. Uh, and uh, I'm going to sh just show you that real quick <coughs> so you can see kind of what goes on. So this is, this is number two, number two cable here. And the terminals here that I have are for number four. So I'm going to uh, pause the video and see if by any chance I have any, any number two logs uh, that are available. Uh, or if I have a number four piece of cable that I can grab that's available. And then uh, we'll go, go ahead and continue this. All right, I'm back. So I uh, do have uh, some number four cable that's available. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and cut that. As I mentioned, and uh, we're going to do the same thing that we did with the number two. We're just going to trim that uh, with a knife, grab it, pull it out, and uh, you can see there's a little more that's going to be exposed here. So that's uh, what, kind of what we want. We want to go ahead and take this now, bunch it up, take that welding lug, that copper welding lug, and just uh, work it in there. And uh, that's kind of what it looks like, as you can see. Uh, so that's what it looks like. What we want to do now is we want to go ahead and put that in the vise. And we're going to crimp it with the vise. So we're going to turn that vise. And we're going to pull this out. I'm going to bring it back to you and see what that looks like. It has the marks of the uh, of the front ends, you know, of the fronts of the vise, 
and uh, it gives you a fairly decent mechanical bunt there. Sorry that I uh, missed that I didn't have it in a, on the proper focus setting. Alright, so uh, I put the uh, cable on the vise, as you can see, and now we're going to get ready to solder it. Uh, so we have the uh, solder uh, cable here, or the, the solder wire, I should say, I'm sorry. Uh, and this is pretty thin stuff that I had laying around for electronics work. It's not really for this heavy duty work. It is the same solder uh, that you use, uh, except you want to get one that's thick so you don't have to continually you know, feed. Uh, just a little piece like that would, uh, you know, would fill that up pretty well. So, uh, uh, get some solder, get a propane torch, uh, and then just light it up. And you don't have to open it a whole lot, just a little will do. So we're going to open this up. There you go. And uh, just get that flame going in there. And then apply that heat down here. And it might take a, a few minutes to do, uh, but you want to apply it to the bottom because what you want to do is you want to feed, you want to heat that terminal up and feed the solder from the top down uh, so that the solder will walk and be drawn towards the heat. And so the whole terminal has to be uh, hot and, uh, and that will heat up the cable as well. And then that will provide you with the mechanical bond that you need to. So, uh, you know, having a flame that has a blue tip, like kind of what you're seeing in here, and that blue tip being being an inch to an inch and a half long, what you want to do is you want to apply the, the very end of that tip to that terminal. That's the hottest part of the flame there. And just kind of keep it there for a few seconds. And then uh, we're going to test it and make sure that we can draw from it. I think it's probably getting close to that point right now. You can see it's feeding. It's feeding right now. So you just feed that through. I mean, on one, some more. This is kind of why I said you want to get a thick uh, cable for a solder uh, wire. And then you just continue feeding that. And you feed it, and you feed it, and you feed it. And you see that it's hot enough that it will melt and be drawn in it. If you see that it's not sticking and it's going on and spilling on the outside, that means the, uh, the terminal and the cable are not hot enough to do that. So you just kind of keep that flame on there, move it a little bit, and then uh, continue applying that heat. You can see that, that it'll get drawn in there and just keep doing that. You draw more wire out. nice and full and when it's full then you know that there will be a good mechanical bond between the terminal and the uh, and this and the cable there you go it's full now we take that flame off, shut it down, and uh, you know now you can get just a wet rag, put it around it, and uh, cool it off. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and blow on it for just a second. Uh, this vise will actually draw the heat away from it, let it help it cool off. It's probably good now. I'm going to take it for just a second and. Uh, uh, now we're going to wrap some electrical tape and, uh, uh, and or uh, you could use heat shrink tubing that you could purchase from a battery shop or places like Napa. This is pretty heavy, heavy duty stuff as you can see here. Uh, that will just go on the end of it and then you put it on there and then take the torch, apply heat around it and it will shrink and hold tight on it and then you don't have this exposed end on it. That's one way of doing it. Uh, the easier way maybe for most people faster also, is to uh, actually get some electrical tape. And you can go to Lowe's and you can get, I would suggest you go to Lowe's and get a roll of black and a roll of red. Uh, wrap the red around it uh, for the terminal ends that are going to go to the positive uh, K 
cables of the, or the positive end of the battery. So you in, in immediately uh, see that if it's red, you know it's a positive terminal. And then the other end, I might go to the black, and I just did one, did one, did one already here. Uh, you know, this one's black, so I know that's going to go to my uh, other end of the uh, of the battery of the negative. Uh, if this were red, then I'd just wrap it around here, right? And uh, and then I'd know that that's my negative end of the cable. And this stuff actually takes quite a bit of uh, heat, so it doesn't take long. I do three wraps because this is a pretty thin one here. Uh, and you just cut it out and you're done. So that's as hard as it is to make a cable uh, for batteries. Uh, pretty easy stuff. Just make sure that you're consistent in the length. Uh, make it to the longest length. Make sure that they are all the same length except obviously the cable that goes from your battery to your inverter. That could be any length that you want to. But uh, as far as those two cables that go to the inverter, make sure that they're both the same length. Uh, both the negative and the positive. Uh, and also make sure that you're always, always using a wire that's appropriate for the load that you're using. So this is number four, uh, but for my uh, loads, I'm actually using number two. On some loads, I actually use a uh, bigger cable uh, for my 24 volt battery bank that goes to my uh, uh, my four kilowatt inverter. I use uh, uh, double odd uh, gauge wire. So. Uh, make sure that you take into consideration your wire size when it comes to the battery voltage and how many watts you're going to be pulling out of it or putting into it to make sure that you don't heat the wire and, and have a lot of loss uh, due to the resistance in the wire. So that's it. I hope uh, you find it uh, interesting, uh, easy to do. Uh, don't pay you know other people to do this for you. Just take doesn't take a whole lot of time. It just takes a little bit of uh, you know. A uh, little bit of time to really just get the soldering done. And that's it. So thanks everybody for watching. Take care and God bless.